Hello everyone, this is Dr. Kamsha, PG resident in Department of Radio Diagnosis in Maharishi Markandeshwar Institute of Medical Science and Research, Mulana. I am presenting paper on evaluation of spinal tuberculosis on 3 Tesla magnetic resonance imaging, a case study. Introduction pot is a tubercular infection of the spine was first described in 1779 by Percival Pot. It is the most common cause of non-traumatic paraplegia in the world. The spinal involvement usually is the result of hematogenous spread of mycobacterium tuberculosis via respiratory tract or intestine into the dense vasculature of cancellous bones of vertebral bodies. Involvement of IBD result in loss of disc height and collapse of vertebral body resulting in sharp angulation scyphus. According to WHO in 2006, nearly 2 billion people, about one third of world population have tuberculosis. Spinal TB accounts for 2% of all TB cases, 15% of extrapulmonary TB and 50% of skeletal TB. The clinical presentation of TB spine is variable in, in, in CDS in onset. The most common symptom of all being low back. Constitutive symptoms such as loss of weight, anorexia, low grade fever and malias are more commonly associated with pulmonary TB than with Plain radiograph, CT scan, and MRI are prime modalities to assess both series. There must be at least 30% destruction of bone mineral loss is needed to show radiolysis lesions on X-ray. Computed tomography is excellent for delineating bony details. However, it is inferior to MR imaging for early assessment of neural structures and soft tissue extension. It is also not preferred due to radiation exposure. MRI provides excellent details of neural as well as soft tissue extension in spinal tuberculosis, therefore beneficial for early diagnosis as well as planning management. Aim is to study three Tesla MRI in evaluation of spinal tuberculosis. Objective to describe pattern of occurrence of spinal tuberculosis on MRI and to evaluate role of MRI in assessing extent of disease and its correlation with neurological station of uh, status of patients in spinal tuberculosis. Material and methods. Study was done in Department of Radio Diagnosis and Imaging in MMI MSR Mulana. 85 patients were taken irrespective of age and sex with clinically suspected and diagnosed cases of spinal tuberculosis. Inclusion criteria, all patients with clinically suspected and diagnosed cases of tuberculosis irrespective of age and sex. Exclusion criteria, patients with uh, treated patients, operative patients, uh, patients with claustrophobia, metallic implants and traumatic and regenerative cases were not taken. Details of imaging technique used. 3 Tesla MR imaging. Imaging was performed in 3 Tesla system. Parameters taken on MRI were T1 weighted sagittal and axial, T2 weighted sagittal and axial. Stir images sagittal and post gadolinium uh, axial coronal and sagittal T1 weighted whenever necessary. Results. The study was carried out in 85 patients out of which 47 were male and 36 were females. Mean age group was 37.2 years. Maximum number of patients were between age group of 20 to 30 years. Most common symptom was backache. Uh, which was present in 73 patients. 58% patients had constitutional symptoms. Neurological involvement in the form of root pain was present in 32 patients with paralysis was present in 23 patients. It erythrocyte sedimentation rate was raised in 82 patients out of 85. Montox test was performed in all 85 patients and was found to be positive in 75 of them. Chest diagram PA view was taken uh, for all the patients, it revealed associated pulmonary tuberculosis in 27 patients. Plain radiograph findings were abnormal in 72 out of 85 patients. Involvement of the body was present in 66 out of 85 patients. The typical feature of tuberculosis paradiscal was present in 18 out of 85 patients. Osteitis was seen as low in signal intensity on T1-weighted images and high signal intensity on T2-weighted images. On T1-weighted images, 74 out of 85 patients showed hypo-intense signal intensity. On T2-weighted images, 80% showed hyper-intense signal intensity. On star sequence, 87.1% patients showed hyper-intense signal uh, intensity. 53 out of 80 patients showed peripheral enhancement. Maximum number of vertebrae involved in a signal, single patient was 14. Minimum number was 1. On MR imaging, average number of vertebrae involvement in a pa per patient was 3.09. Lumbar spine was the most common site of involvement in the present study. 36 patients out of 85 patients showed involvement of lumbar spine. The most, uh, second most common site of involvement was dorsal spine with involvement of 27 out of 85 patients. Least com uh, common sites were cervical dorsal followed by sexual lesion. 47 out of 85 patients showed epidural collection. 22 out of 85 patients had changes in signal intensity of spinal cord. This is case one of 25 year old female presenting with chronic fatigue, low grade fever and bowel bladder weakness. In first image, frontal radiograph of sacral spine is taken which shows blurring of lumbosacral lesion and first sacral vertebra. In second image, T2 weighted sequence image shows destruction of L5 and S1 vertebral body in with intervertebral disc with a large prevertebral and anterior epidural collection. Case 2 showing excessive destruction of L5 vertebral body in T1 weighted and T2 weighted sequences in case of spinal TP.
Case 3, 6 year child with visible deformity of back and unable to walk. Patient was able to stand. First image shows frontal radiograph showing sacroiliatic deformity with ill-defined obliterated paravertebral radio obesity in right lower thoracic spine. Second image shows coronal T1 weighted contrast plus FS image showing peripheral enhancement of the same paravertebral collection. Discussion. The age group of patients ranged from 2 to 88 years with mean age of subjects was 37.2 years. The study population showed slight male predominance comprising of 42.4% females and 57.6% males. Similar observations were seen in a study conducted by Bhatnagar and Sainan. In our study, the most common presenting symptom was chronic low back ache and in 73 out of 85 patients. Yandrapati BBKC also reported backache as the most reliable and important history for further workup. 14 out of 26 showed subligamentous spread of infection in present study. Subligamentous spread was present in 40% cases of study in by Antonio RG. In our study, contiguous pattern of infection spread was the most common pattern seen in 79 out of 85 patients. Similar results were reported in a study done by Anil R with 95.7% patient, with patients having contiguous pattern of spread. In present study, common radiographic finding of spine were consistent with spinal tuberculosis were vertebral body and plate erosion seen in 77.6% patients. Dancha Vizir reported and plate destruction in 43.8% of cases. In the present study, most common site of involvement was lumbar spine followed by dorsal spine. Rafe et al. also reported the two most common sites of involvement were dorsal spine and lumbar sacral spine. In present study, 87.1% cases showed a hypointense signal on T1-weighted sequences and affected vertebra. T2-weighted hypointense signal is noted in 80% of the affected vertebra with hypointense signal on star sequence in 87.1% patients, suggesting edematous change due to inflammatory process. This observation were comparable to a, a similar study by Bhatnagar revealed that tubercular lesions were T1-weighted hypo-intense with hypertense signal on T2-weighted and star sequences 98 and 96% cases respectively at the initial study of scan. In our study, epidural collection was noted in 47 patients of the cases, which was similar to the observation done by R. Singh and L. Jen A.K. observed an epidural collection in 18% cases, of which was similar to the finding in study by Anil R. with 82.9% cases of epi with the epidural Conclusion, since MRI is non-invasive, highly sensitive and capable of multi-planar imaging, it should be considered as the main imaging modality for suspected tuberculous spondylitis, intradular extramedullary tuberculosis, tubercular arcanotitis and intramedullary tuberculosis. The ability of MRI to detect tuberculosis of spine earlier than other techniques could reduce the bone destruction and deformity and hence need for surgical intervention. These are my reference.